welcome to the Metal Voice. First time on the show, Ron Bumblefoot-Thal. How's it going? Good. You never forget your first. So thank you for <laughs> It's a first for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me. Great news. A new album's coming out, Insanium, by the new band, Whom Gods Destroy. Great name for a band, by the way, Ron. Great. Thank you. For yeah, it's, a, it's a love it or hate it name. If you're a Star Trek fan, then you're going to like the name as the name of a Star Trek episode. Which one was I it? I believe season number three. Uh, yeah. And it was the one where, remember the green, that sexy green lady dancing around? And Are we going classics now? We're going Star oh, Trek yeah. classics? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there's a few green ladies in the first uh, series. <laughs> there were, yeah. Was it a Marta? I think. I forget. But is that your favorite of the uh, the the Star Treks? Is the is it a classic? Um, when I was a horny teenager, yeah. Uh, okay. The Green Lady. So, uh, no. What would be my favorite? Next of generation the old, so or machine? There was. Uh, well, no, I'm I, not I, saying I'm not saying which which I'm saying which series. So, Next Generation, the classics. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I'm an old school 67 to 69, the, the original 79 episodes. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. All right. So you're a classic Star Trek fan. Yeah. Although I do like the movies. The movies are good too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I kind of like all the Star Treks. I, I, I like this discovery. I like, uh, geez, what was with Captain Janeway again? Uh, what was it called again? I forgot. But it's okay. <laughs> we'll think about it later. Uh, Deep Space cool. Nine. Deep Space Nine. Right. Classics. The Next Generation. Uh, Enterprise. There was a, there was a, there was there was actually a series that kind of the backstory of Enterprise. And, and there was the cartoon in the seventies. There was a cartoon. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I could get into a whole thing about Star Trek, but I won't. I could bring out my encyclopedia of Star Trek, but I won't. Oh, do you have your compendium of all? <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. All right. So let's talk about music here. All right. New <laughs> band, Whom Gods Destroy. I, I'm, I'm assuming this is like the splinter group of Sons of Apollo, right? Okay. Let's, let's just start off right there. Mm -hmm. I remember Sons of Apollo. Great momentum on the first album. Even better momentum on the second album. Then COVID smacks down and everything completely falls apart. <laughs> What happened? Well, we were on tour, shows, we, we had doubled uh, our um, attendances. We, we just, everything was going this way. It was going great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we got four shows into a 20 show tour in Europe and we had to pull the plug, COVID and all, and went back home and, and then Derek and I were, you know, we wanted to, and Jeff, the singer, uh, we wanted to start working on album number three. It's like, we have all this time now to nurture it. Yep. But not everybody was on board to do that. Some people had their own plans and things they wanted to do, which they did. And so, killed the band. So we just, Derek and I, what happened was it split into two bands. And Jeff and I... Jeff wanted to, he offered to join, uh, be the singer for this band that I had with old friends of mine called Art of Anarchy. Yes. And he knew that we were just during the pandemic, like, yeah, we'd get together and record songs. And, and he said, you've had all these problematic singers. You should have just worked with me from the beginning and everything would have been fine. And I was like, I agree. Uh, so he offered to be the singer and of course the band all said hell yeah and so now i have art of anarchy with jeff and derek and i just continued writing as we did with sons of apollo where we just write we write the music and we kept doing that and we realized that that uh you know with certain members not interested we couldn't really continue with sons of apollo I mean, Jeff was interested. He, he would have loved to do a third one. Uh, but we found new band members. So started with Dino on vocals. Yes. Uh, From White Snake fame, of, I guess, or, or kind of, right? 
Yeah. So we got Dino and uh, then we got Yaz on bass, which is kind of funny because he's this incredible guitar player. But then again, Dino is also an incredible, he's an amazing keyboard player and songwriter and everything. Uh, all the guys in the band are multi-talented. Uh, and we got Bruno on drums and it became this. So it, it really started from the, the ashes of Sons of Apollo. We, crawled out and and just we continued writing what could have become a third sons of apollo album but it wasn't going to happen so were these the songs like the i wouldn't call them leftovers but ideas that were being worked on for sons of apollo no they were all fresh brand new stuff we were writing yeah, yeah. no yeah. leftovers no, nothing in the I don't mean it in that way. I don't mean it in that way. I don't mean leftovers in the freezer, like you know, like I, but, well, I meant like, like impetus, have... imp the the sort of like the start of new ideas for the third album. That's what I kind of meant. Yeah, I mean, well, even still, like we could have had you know a bunch of unfinished music that we never worked up for Sons of Apollo past albums that we could have brought into this, but we just we were writing fresh and we just started writing, and it wasn't long after we started that Dino joined and, and it started going in the new direction. It, it, let me, like I saw Sons of Apollo in January, 2020 in Montreal at the Corona theater. And yeah. that was kind of like right before right when Corona was actually, and I remember Jeff Scott Soto even said this to me, he goes, use that, that joke about, ah, the Corona at the Corona theater, right? <laughs> I don't know if you remember this or not. Yes. <laughs> And it that was, was the beginning people. of the end, actually. That was the beginning. Of, and, and it was packed. And, and you, there was such great momentum. That's what I'm getting at. Is it too difficult? So you have all these skilled uh, artists in the band with so much history and experience. Is it hard to keep a group of guys like that or artists like that and keep it as an ongoing band? Because you got Porno. You got you know, Billy Sheen. You got yourself. You got Jeff Scott Soto. Um, and of course, Derek, is it tough to keep it going economically as well as maybe ego wise, perhaps? I don't know. Oh, um, nothing is easy. Yeah. No. It can be easy if everyone just shuts the fuck up and does their job. <laughs> and yeah, if people think about the hive and not just their be self, uh, yeah, if you have the mentality of, of, you know, being a team player and not just a selfish fuck, then a band can easily work and last for decades. Yeah. All right. I mean, it, it's it's a shame. Is it easier to get, so Dino is sort of an up and coming singer, right? Is it easier to work sometimes with more of those guys versus uh, the more established players? They're more no, flexible. That's what I'm trying to say. No, yeah, nobody is, is like an employee just because they were born later. Uh, <laughs> and I should also say before it gets twisted. Around, and I don't mean it like that. I don't mean it like that either. Also, I'm not calling anyone in particular a selfish fuck. I'm just saying that in bands, in every band, you're going to have the narcissist. You're going to have usually a drug addict narcissist. You're going to have the conspiring, greedy asshole. You're going to have the one that is just riddled with depression and thinks that every note is the most important thing that happened. And, and, and also you have people that forget that if you have four or five people in the band, you should only be getting 25 or 20% of your ideas going through. And if you're hogging it up, you're taking away from everyone else. And it's you know not a fair scenario when someone is going to feel like, they're left out and not being heard and and not feel like an equal so i always say in a band in a band of five uh unemployable dysfunctional dudes uh you know if everybody is if only one out of five of your ideas makes it through then everything is fair and you have to be able to be okay with that if uh, yeah, 20% times five, like that's how it should be. Uh, yeah, you have to accept that mentality and anything beyond that, think of as a bonus and don't look at it like, you know, <laughs> bands yeah, are a pretty yeah. fucked up marriage. 
You know? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, because now you got five to deal with, right? Instead of one, you know, or another person, right? But maybe it's better to do this. It's have two experienced guys who know their way around to control things in a, in a good way, right? The management, the money. They know, they've been around. They know what to do. Then you have like the up and coming guys who have the talent and uh, they can, they're not, well, they're easier to deal with. That's what I'm getting at. Well, hopefully. I mean, you know, people are people at any age. Uh, and I find that very often the older people are the more immature ones and the more petty yes. ones. Yes. Uh, yes. But even though the guys are you know, younger, they have busted their ass their whole damn lives and they're not newbies at all. I mean, our drummer Bruno, how long has he been playing in Angra and how many things has he done with how many people? Like he, you know, all these guys are seasoned as fuck. Uh, they've done it all. Um, yeah, I guess the only difference is, you know, I'm at a point in life where I'm jaded. I'm finally getting to the point of being jaded and bitter and, and, and just ready to stop where they still have that. Yeah, let's get out and tour. And I'm like, I just want to go home and pick raspberries in my yard. Uh, yeah, there's always so many decades that you could do something before it's like enough already. I'm, I've missed too much of life. I've missed too many funerals and too many births and weddings and everything and been an absentee member of my family in my own life. So yeah, it does get to a point, at least for me. Uh, you know what, actually maybe just for me, because I know people in their seventies that still love touring. But for me, I just want to produce other up and coming artists and help them get out there and do their thing and be at their best and teach and just support the next generations of people that are doing this. I'm done. I'm as good as dead as far as I'm concerned. I'm, you know, I had my life. I lived it. I don't need to live it anymore. Uh, if I die tomorrow, I'll die just fine. I won't feel like, oh, but if only I did this or that. No, I'm good. So I'm at a point where I have that piece where it's like, all right, now let me take everything all the ups and downs that I experienced and and pay it forward and, and use that to help and guide others as they launch themselves. That's what I want to do. That's where my heart is at. Uh, but, you know, I'm in two bands and I'm going to get out and play. <laughs> Saying that, it's not really the case, but here we go. Yeah, Describe well, this. It's, yeah, it's like... But I, I know I know what you're saying. You're kind of like, yeah. if it all ended tomorrow, you're happy. That's what you're right. saying. Right. And I guess this, what I'm also saying is I try to get out, but they pull me back in kind of thing. Yeah. yeah it's like the mafia, right? Um, tell me about the musical direction for the people who haven't heard the rest of the album compared to the first two singles that were released. How well, would you similar. describe it? Yeah, it's similar. It's it's If you know Sons of Apollo, it's like Sons of Apollo with the intensity knobs turned up you know, across, you know, just turning the 10s up to 11s. And uh, yeah, the proggy stuff is pretty proggy. The solos are crazy. The melodies are melodic. The heaviness is heavier. It's, it's to me, it's just more intense. And, and I remember when we were first showing it to the label, they were a little concerned because they were expecting Sons of Apollo 3. And this was described more as, it's like a constant pummeling. <laughs> and yeah. It's like, yeah, as it should be. Go out swing, you know, just come in swinging. Yeah. You know, it, it does. Look, I, I'm going to be honest. Like, I mean, with the exception of the vocals, it sounds like the musical style of Sons of Apollo. It's proggy. It's... It's it's like you said, it's in your face and it's it's aggressive, but at the same time it's soft. And I love Derek's contribution on keyboards. It it really he, he's a great keyboardist, just on all yeah. levels. You yeah, know, each um, person is a very specific key ingredient in the mix that creates the flavor of what it is. And that goes for any band. Um like I always say, like I've always said it, like the thing that's great about bands is that every single one is one of a kind in all the history of mankind in the entire universe of everything. Whether it's some kids playing in their garage or some band that's been around for 40 years doing it, uh, there's only one grouping of those individual souls that come together, that add what they add, that make it what it is. 
Every yeah. band is so special when you really think about it. What's There's the most no other mix? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I agree. And if jo- Jeff would have been in the band as the singer, it would have brought it back to Sons of Apollo, right? It would have been said, okay, this is pretty much Sons of Apollo, right? Minus two guys. Right. Is that, is that kind of why he didn't like come with you guys for the ride for whom gods destroy? Uh, well, I mean, it, it's there was the whole thing of. If it's not the five guys of Sons of Apollo, it's not Sons of Apollo. If two members do something together, it's a new band. If three members do something together, it's a band missing two, it's this old band missing two members, you know? And that goes in, you know, for both Art of Anarchy with Jeff and uh, Whom Gods Destroy with with Derek. Yet we have done other things together. There is this, band in Indonesia uh, called Dewa 19, like a huge rock band Mm -hmm. out there. And we did this collaboration with them uh, during the pandemic years. Uh, It was a lot of fun where we did songs together where we all played and and yeah. So it's, it's, we're not, you know, it's not one of these things where, you know, it's all hate and division. It's just you know, the band unfortunately couldn't continue and we all work, you know, we're doing what we can in some capacity one way or another to keep it going. Yeah. You know, another band that I really loved over the years is Asia and your, your oh. participation in the band. I mean, tell me a little bit like the highs and lows about being in Asia. Because, um, you know, the, from that first album to the second album was like, the second album was just, it was just monumental at the time. It was just, I'm yeah. old enough to remember. It was just, Wow, man, Steve Howe, and you're replacing Steve Howe and others, of course, but tell me about that experience. Yeah, it, it was absolutely wonderful. They are such great, great guys. They're phenomenal players. They're just great to hang with. Uh, they're wonderful, and the music is wonderful. So in 2000, well, it started in 2016, mm-hmm. where I did this thing with, with Jeff Downs, it was a sort of like an all-star-ish type thing. And it was Carmine on drums, Jeff on keys, and uh, Phil Narrow, wonderful friend, beautiful person. Uh, sadly, he passed away. He was the singer of Talis with Billy Sheehan. Mm. And, you know, just great dude and phenomenal singer. So he was the singer. And uh, Rudy Sarza was on bass. And I was on guitar along with gene cornish from the rascals oh geez yeah and he's <laughs> such a great guy and it was just so much fun playing because we had such different musical backgrounds although i am a huge rascals fan i love <laughs> young rascals one of my favorite memories of their music is when i was just dating my wife this had to be 33 years ago and i was taking her on a cruise and we were in the taxi going to the port in miami and in the taxi was the song how can i be sure playing on the radio mm-hmm. and i just remember that whole moment you know how certain moments stick in your mind where you remember the smell of things you remember everything that you saw and it just when you think of it just something takes you right back there. And I remember just sitting in the back of that, that cab and hearing the song on the radio. Uh, yeah. And when a band has songs that are specific, like they're, they're part of those moments in your life that you remember. Just soundtrack of your life. That they always say, soundtrack of your life. Yeah. And... The Rascals had plenty of those kind of songs for a lot of people. Uh, you know, got so did Asia. Groovy. So did Asia. And right? Asia as well. So it started with this thing that we did together. And we played in Toronto. And we played in Chicago. We did two shows together of this stuff. And it was great playing with, with, with Jeff. And then the next year they were going to be touring opening for journey and they asked me if i would play guitar mm-hmm. but sons of apollo was just getting off the ground that year and art of anarchy was on tour for its second album and i was just i had too much going on i couldn't do it i told them i was like 
I can't make it happen. No. Uh, and two years later, they had the tour opening for Yes. And they asked again, said, you want to play guitar? And I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> and, and then the, someone else was going to be singing. And he, it turns out he couldn't do it. And the oldest said, why not just have Ron sing? He could sing this. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, do you want to be the singer too? I'm like, oh, good God. Like, like that's too, like, I'm not worthy. I'm not qualified. I'm not able. And I said, yes. Uh, <laughs> so now I am fronting Asia as the guitarist and the vocalist. Uh, and that, I had to make sure I didn't fuck that up. Like, to me, that was like, you know, out of tribute and respect to, you know, the, to all of it, uh, to, to John Wetton, to his family, yeah. to fans, to the band. I had to make sure that when people close their eyes and they listen, that it feels that same feeling they get from Asian music. You know, I can't do it. It can't be me. I have to be Asian. Right. Yeah. And it's like almost like an actor that has to become, you know, you can't be yourself anymore. You have to live that part and be that part and become that person that you're playing. So I pretty much had to relearn how to sing a different way so that I would sound more like him and less like me because I was just more of like this, you know, high pitch, heavy metal, Iron Maiden kind of singer. And, you know, with the big, you know, boisterous vibrato and, and this bright brassy kind of sound. And now I needed to have this very straight, airy, resonating in different places, no vibrato voice and make sure that when I'm staring at thousands of people like this, that my nerves don't just take me to the safe spot of singing how I've sang my whole damn life. So I spent a lot of time, uh, I think it was two months, I'm starting to forget if it was one month or two, but I think it was two months where I spent eight hours a day for two months singing, figuring out how to sing more like him and just changing it and doing it so much wow. that it became the new way that I sang and changed my entire way of singing so that when I go up there and adrenaline kicks in and brain stops working and I'm on autopilot, that I'll be that voice doing it. I'll sing that sound. And on top of that, uh, the guitar parts, yeah. you know, Steve Howe, his parts aren't anchored in with right. Wetton's vocals. The bass parts are. That's coming from one person. So those parts match. And so now, first thing I did in the very beginning is I started researching, uh, going through old interviews and, and everything and figuring out what, finding out what, Steve Howe used on the albums and what he did live from recent to very first tour. And then taking my Helix pedal and program, trying to get similar sounds and then learning all his parts and learning all the vocals, memorizing the vocals and then coordinating to do both at the same time and changing guitar sounds with my right foot while changing vocal sounds. I had to do vocal sounds with my left foot, adding reverb or adding this and adding that and doubling. So figuring out how to make all of that happen comfortably and seamlessly so that I will do justice and, and give everything possible to make sure that that is gets what it deserves. You know, John Wetton, his voice is so underappreciated. You know, he's, he's, He's he's got such a it's it's such a calm melodic big voice right and, and you, to everything you're saying is like you're spot on man and then Steve Howe 
And to your point, he's not playing power chords to the melody of the song. He's just playing solos basically the whole time. He does all these secondary melodies and things. And that's, that, right. that's like always been his, his... That's a better way to say it, secondary melodies. And that's where it could confuse the brain, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then to do... Because uh, we also did Lucky Man from ELP. Yeah, and yeah. we did uh, Video Killed the Radio Star from The Buggles. So to do that one now, I had to also sing all those parts and do the the uh megaphone so sometimes i had to play guitar with one hand and do like the little like like that while holding the megaphone and then pull the megaphone away go to the the microphone and just do this you know kind of sound you were the bottom and trying to imitate all the voices for it. And I programmed in a harmonizer so that when I'm singing the uh, video kill the radio star, it's going video kill the radio star and then switching tone in and switching it. Now, at that point, I throw down the megaphone and hit a megaphone sound on the pedal for like in my, land, in my car you know, and then switch back to oh, 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 oh. And then put on the reverb for the end. You are radio and just like so much switching and and making it look as easy as possible. Like I'm just standing there singing. That's the goal. You know what? You know what I love. What you're saying. You're like the last true artist. Well, there's a few of you. You could use backing tracks. You could mime it. Right. You could not play it. But you're going. You're like the rush style of of doing things, or that hardworking, ethical. I'm going to try to do it all, basically. Yeah, and that that's being an artist. Yeah. Well, do what you can do. Do <laughs> give it as much as you can give it. And even then, like our uh, the sound man, uh, we only had two days of rehearsal before going out and doing this, and our front of house guy. He was busy enough with the stuff. I could not ask him to to do, you know, throw a big reverb on me for these parts of the song where he has to like be the vocalist at the same time that he has to be the engineer. So it's like, look, I have to make sure that I have this covered and that all he has to do is just make sure people hear it. Uh, yeah, so it was a lot of silent tap dancing and, and doing everything and, and I loved it. It was it was the biggest challenge of anything I ever did. And uh, as long as and it was it was tough. There was you know some songs where I would get kind of emotional. You got the big screen behind me showing all the stuff of John Wetton's life and I sing one of the ballads and knowing his his family is out there watching and and yeah, it was, it was something. It was an experience. And what was cool is that in the last four songs, the yeah. big hits, uh, Steve Howard come out. Oh, Steve yeah, Howard, joined legend. legend. So now it's, you know, the three surviving members. We got Billy Sherwood on bass, incredible, wonderful guy. And, and during rehearsal, Steve asked me if I would not play guitar while he was out there because the nature, like, because he wants it to be legit. Yeah. You know, it's not just, you know, yeah. a bunch of guitar players. He was the guitarist and it was a one guitar band. So I'm like, sure. So now I take off my guitar and now I'm just fucking Wayne Newton singer. And yeah, so that was a new thing also. It's like, I don't have my security blanket of, of my guitar. And now I just got to front the thing, holding a microphone and be the singer. Uh, and, you know, as far as I'm concerned, whatever Steve wants is how it should be. You know, this was his <laughs> band and I'm just a guy that's, that's just trying to celebrate it and, you know, with everybody and make that celebration happen. So, it, yeah. it, so, so I, I was going to ask you, what's the biggest highlight musically in your career? And I guess this is probably one of them, right? It, it's just that was that was something. Yeah. It was like, that was definitely up there. Yeah. 
I guess what motivates you, it's not getting the call for guns. It's getting the, the opportunity to prove yourself as an artist, right? It, it, that's what it sounds like. The challenges. The challenges. The challenges yeah. what, what what drives you. A lot of people doesn't drive them challenges. You know, the challenges don't drive them at all. It, it's maybe it's yeah, even for... with with you know our own music with Art of Anarchy and Whom Gods Destroy with Sons of Apollo with my own Bumblefoot music. The challenges. Uh, doing some pretty impossible shit on <laughs> some of these songs. It's like why I'm gonna have to play this live. I can't. Uh, yeah, playing both next at once and with different tunings and uh, yeah, crazy shit. You know, it's interesting on the song Crawl, it has a Mexican radio intro, like, you know, that sort of uh, chaotic sort of keyboard at the beginning. Listen to it. <laughs> That's how Mexican radio, it's, I'm not saying it's, it's, I'm not saying it is Mexican radio. I'm just saying it has that vibe there. I don't know if it would ever get on Mexican radio, but it definitely has... Let's see, am I even plugged in? I think it's the keyboard that's doing it, right? It's the keyboard that does it. That's and, right. But we don't play it. Derek comes up with some crazy ass keyboard part. He says, hey, can you double this on guitar? Oh, okay, okay. No, I see where you're going now. Finger, like, this doesn't do that. Um, but then we find a way. So for that one, um, how did we, yeah. So it sounds like a, a chaotic, uh, technical yeah so he had that part and then I would double it I would have to do it on the fretless because of the tuning it was like oh wait 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 wait, wait. what was it on it's like yeah it's like this crazy thing and then jumping to so yeah that was it it's like I'm out of practice. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of crazy stuff in there. And in that song, I got to play both necks during the chorus. It doesn't sound like anything when you're listening. It's just like... Switch to there. So, so Ron, when you're when you're flipping from the double necks from one to the other, there's no switch to switch back and forth. They're both live. Is that what it is? Uh, no, there's a switch. So there I have to switch. switch too. Usually I have. So you're playing on the top, and you had to flip the switch and go to the other real quick. So this switch right here. So it's hit. Yeah, I see it now. Okay, I see it. Is it easier with a pedal? Maybe it would be easier with a pedal. But what I do is I just, when I go from one, I just quickly switch, and then as I switch, hitting the, the thing right there. Uh, yeah, it's, I really paint myself into a corner with this shit. I do. It's about the challenge. It's about the challenge. <laughs> yeah, this is a challenge. What else do you want to say about the, uh, the new album? How's that? We'll go back to the new album again. So what do you want to say about the new album? That, that, oh, that should be mentioned. Like that should be mentioned. Yeah. So, whom gods destroy? Everyone calls it Insanium. I don't know if it's Insanium or Insanium. I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't know. It. Insanium, um, like Sanitarium or Insanium. I guess Insanium, right? I don't know. Was that another Star Trek episode? <laughs> insanium? It wasn't. It was just, we were. Well, here's the thing like, the full quote is. Uh, uh, whom like those whom gods destroy for those gods destroy they first make mad yeah, so it's like all right well the band name is the whom gods destroy so something that references they first make mad crazy yeah. uh so something about crazy insane insane asylum insane is insane so let's yeah. keep up with that insane. it's going to be released on march 15th it worldwide is. inside out music we should mention that i didn't mention that um Tour. What, what, what's the, what are the tour plans here? What, what, what are you thinking? You're just going to throw it out there, see what happens, and then base that on what the, the offers are like? Or what are you going to do? Well, when it comes to touring, we're at the mercy of promoters. They decide 
where we're going to play and when and all of that stuff. So, right now, it's a little, well, you know, we don't have a tour set up yet. Uh, we, of course, we're going to, and that's what bands do. You got to get out and tour the fuck out of an album. Mm -hmm. So, they uh, says, guys in the band that, why did I suddenly lose the ability to speak? What the fuck happened? Okay, I don't know. All right, here we go. So a couple of guys in the band, they already have some prior obligations that they have to yeah. do. So they already have shit lined up for the summer and stuff like that. So that makes it a little tricky to have a, a tour. Also, when a band puts out a debut album and promoters don't know, like, all right, let's see how this thing does before we make any offers. Uh, then they first make offers and then you first have to wait six months until all the venues are available. So yep. probably we won't be able to do touring if it's gonna happen this year. Uh, a tour, end of the year it would be. Uh, will that even happen? Don't know. We'll have to see. But I'm sure next year, you know, we've all already talked about that. It's like, you know, we need to make sure that we are free and able and uh, that we can put a chunk of time, continuous time, not just like a one-off here or a you know, festival here or like, but like get out and play. So this we'll is a see. band. So this is a band. Like it's not a project, it's a band, correct? It's a band. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's, maybe it's a maybe it's a you know one timer. I don't know. I just uh... well, I think yeah. It doesn't have the intention of being a one timer. Okay. Uh, as long as people behave themselves, it won't be a one timer. That's right. That's right. Uh, that's right. Yeah. When we, <laughs> so when, when we call on you, you show up and you buy the album. Then it won't be a one timer. That's what it comes down to, right? If it if there's some sort of traction, uh, that and if you know. I find in my experience with bands is that all it takes is one person to fuck it up. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, so let's let's not fuck it up, and then it, you know it can last for until death do us part. Uh, that's the whole thing. That's what kills bands is a band member fucks it up. So as long as we don't do that. And also, what are you going to play during this during this tour? If you do go on tour, you're going to play the whole album. You're going to throw in some sure. cover tunes. I remember. Sons of Apollo, I think you you had a lot of cover tunes when you first went out. You played a lot of yeah, because we all, we didn't have enough music to play right, for that's right two hours, so we did some Dream Theater covers and just some fun shit that we like to play Van Halen and uh, what would you play yeah, if you so, had a set list? Well, it, it, what what, do you, what what would you like to do? What would I like to do? Yeah, what would you like to? Do? See, I'm the wrong guy to ask because I got some weird taste of stuff. The Rascals and Asia, you're just gonna exactly, go all over the place. Do. Yeah, we, we could do a... Mm -hmm. Video killed the radio star. Exactly. Oh, oh, you are the... Yeah, we could do that. I never meant to be so bad to you. Boom, boom, cha. Uh, what else? I, I would just want to do a bunch of Iron Maiden. Oh, uh, there you go. Yeah, I, I would never get my way in a million years. I would want to do Tom Jones, but like deep cuts that people don't know. Uh, like I would just come up with the most fucked up shit and people would just throw things at us. I would I would sell produce at the merch stand for them to throw it at us. Uh, if we had to do the songs that I chose. All right. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I guess we would do things. You have to think about it. You got to think about a set list, right? You got this. Would you throw in Sons of Apollo or is that holy ground you can't touch that i mean it's it's a thought yeah i mean it you know it wouldn't be completely uh off the table or just like well i guess I you guys how, could think see, of i don't know how the other guys would feel about that like, I'm fine if anybody wants to play Sons of Apollo shit, the more the merrier. Go ahead, play it. Yeah, you know, the yeah. songs are out there, they exist, keep them alive. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, keep the music going. I don't need to be there. I was there. All right, next time we more. next time we have an interview, set list. That's what we're talking about. We're just going to have a whole, yeah. so, figure out the whole brainstorming on the set list. Well, the album itself is is close to an hour. I got long, there. Right? Was it so you could, you could do an hour, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so figure with bullshitting and extended solo parts and all of that stuff, we could easily do an hour. 
Uh, but then, like, like if, if we get a headline, we need to do at least an hour and a half would be the right thing to do, uh, if not two hours. So what do we do in the other hour? What, you know what we should do? Is we should poll the audience. Oh, no, never do that. Never do that. Never do that. <laughs> hey, what do you all want to hear? Yeah, Anything yeah. goes. Yeah, yeah. and see what that's happens. That's a mess. And that's a mess. That's a mess. And I've seen that happen and it's a mess. It's sort of like A or B and they can't even get that straight. You know, like. Mm -hmm. um, I did that once for, for a solo tour. I had a list of like, I forgot how many songs. And I was like, you choose a set list and whatever people chose the most is what we ended up playing. That was, yeah, that was a while ago. I, I guess if you did it beforehand with a, an, a poll on the website or on well, Facebook yeah. or on social media, then that could work, I guess, right? Yeah, it would have to definitely be something done beforehand. People choose the songs, we see the results, we learn the songs, and we yes. go out and we play the songs. It would be easy to hijack, though, like a bunch of people and their, their, yes. you know, their friends could just be like, all right, let's pick a, you know, a Spice Girls song or something like that. <laughs> just sure, let's, you know. Just do it from every computer we have. And, yes. And, yeah. yes. Yeah. Some, and we go out some there. Some AI, AI virus will come in there and just sort of Spice Girls, Spice Girls, Spice Girls. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah it could work. But it would be fun too. Wouldn't it be fun also? Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I mean, you make it into I've done that too. There you go. I've actually done that. Uh, in solo tours, I would break into just random weird songs. That makes As you no should. sense. As you should. Yeah. As you should. All right. On that note, I know times are running out. Uh, the new album, Whom Gods Destroy, Insanium, or Insanium. It's going to be released March 15th, Worldwide Inside Out Music. It was a pleasure talking to you, uh, Ron. A Thank pleasure. you so much for your time. I uh, hope uh, give you, wish you all the success, and uh, hopefully you'll come around to uh, Montreal or Canada, at least, and uh, play some gigs. Yeah, I hope so. It's been a good minute. Got to get back up there. Yeah. Back to the corona. <laughs> 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 All right, have yourself a good day, all right? Have a great one. Take care.